Hey everybody, a few days ago I unboxed a Key Studio 37-in-1 sensor kit and I came up with an idea and I wanted to see basically could I hook up all 37 sensors to one Arduino Mega. Now I've hooked 50 things up I think to an Arduino before. I've done 50 buttons, I've done uh, for the duck hunt I did 25 laser sensors and 25 LEDs but they were basically all the same. It was kind of a homogenous bunch of stuff. And so with this, I wanted to see, including all the libraries and all the other stuff that had to go along with it, could I actually hook all 37 of these sensors up at one time to an Arduino Mega? And I decided to give myself a few other challenges. One is I wanted to have it all within one square foot. I just wanted to see if I could reasonably fit it in a small area. Um, the second one is I wanted to try to do it without using any, using any external power. I wanted to see could I actually get accurate measurements from the Arduino if I hooked all these sensors up properly to the board itself. And the third thing was that I wanted to use minimal delay in the code. In other words, you know, I didn't want to affect the sensor readings because uh, I've got a delay on one sensor, so I can't read another one. Okay, here are all 37 sensors. I haven't actually counted them. I will count them before I start this project. But uh, here's all 37 sensors kind of lined out. What my original thought that I would do would be to take all the ones that have three pins and try to put maybe the ones that have ground on the left, you know, kind of cram them in the side of the breadboard like that. So that I could basically, you know, make one that had uh, ground on the left, one that had, uh, you know, hot the other side. But that didn't, that wasn't going to work. They're just not going in the side of the breadboard. So instead what I did is I put them all, anything that would fit, I put it in the breadboard just straight across three pins. And then I'm going to have to jumper over to power and ground to hook all these things up. So that's going to be quite the process. And uh, I don't have a ton of, I'm not going to rip apart all my wires to just have some red and, uh, and black ones. So what I think I'm going to do is in the, uh, what was it, the make, the make crate kit, they had these really cool jumper wires that I love, the kind with the molded ones. So what I think I'm going to do is divide these up by color and use these to jump off power and ground to the rails of the breadboard. And then I'm going to come back with the older square style and use those to uh, to connect to the actual mega. Now, I mean, just even just the distance with all these wires is is definitely going to be a challenge. But I am going to try my best to hook all 37 sensors up to the Arduino and actually get useful readings out of them. So wish me luck. All right, here it is in all its glory. There's 37 sensors, 150-ish wires, a Bluetooth connection, and one mega with the only power coming from this blue USB cord. And so I learned a lot. Let me just explain kind of what's going on here and I'll pick it up and show you. So basically, these four breadboards contain the vast majority of the sensors and most of them had pins that were long enough to just kind of stab the sensor in the breadboard as I expected. But this row up here were all ones that didn't have long enough pins to make that happen or they were set too far back on the breadboard. So one of the main concerns I had was power. I knew that obviously there were enough IO pins for, um, you know, for the, the, all the sensors to hook up, but I was worried about power. And so what I did is basically these LEDs right here and the speakers are all on a five second pause. So basically what happens is these are on for five seconds when nothing else is being read and then they turn off and during the time they're off is basically what it takes to read all the rest of the sensors on the board. So it goes through and gets every single value of the board, prints it to serial and then turns the light back on. And then this one here is a three watt LED. I'm going to try to tilt it up. You're barely going to see it. Uh, but this is a three watt LED right here and you'll see it'll just blip for, in fact, you probably can't even see because the other LED. So basically this giant three watt LED only comes on between the time that these are turning off and beginning to read the rest of the sensors. So um, a lot of stuff going on there, but actually all the values work. They're all coming up here on the, 
on the Bluetooth and their actual values. I didn't fudge any of this stuff. Uh, you'll see that like the the one sensor is like three the echo sensor is three centimeters because there's a wire in front of it. But if you move it, it actually does work. So um, I was actually amazed that all this stuff worked on the one set of power and especially when you get into things like these gas sensors these things are actually warm to the touch they warm up and as they get warmer they get more accurate and so there's a fair amount of power draw but it actually never gave any kind of problems what i, I did wind up dividing up uh so that each of these breadboards is basically going to a different five volt source on the arduino but they're they're all working and they're all reading fine and if i shake the board you know, I'm actually getting shaking sensors and all that kind of stuff. So that was really awesome. The next thing I had to deal with was the delay. And so I, I said I was going to challenge myself to not use any delay. Now, obviously, I could write blink without delay and all, all those kind of sketches. But it just takes time. And I was trying to minimize what I, you know, how much time I spent on this project. Because this is obviously a lot of wiring for something that I'm just kind of goofing off about. But the... Basically, I got it down to, other than the delay to hold these lights on so that the serial doesn't just sit there and keep flowing, the only delay in the sketch itself is 12 microseconds. Not nano, not uh, milliseconds, but microseconds. And that's because you, you use the delay to time the echo sensor here, the ultrasonic sensor. So basically, I was able to, these LEDs come off and then it immediately reads all the sensors and then turns the LEDs on. And so the time the LEDs are off is, none of that is off because of delay. It's all off because that's the time it physically takes to go through all of these steps. Now I can't guarantee that some of the libraries don't have delay in them, I don't know. But um, as far as my code, no delays. Now I'll be the first to admit, this project, it was kind of a joke. Like it was kind of, I wanted to see if I could do it. it it's even hard to get you a shot of everything that's going on here. I wanted to see, if I could get all this stuff to hook up and get actual readings, you know, on my little, on my little twisty knobby thingies and all that stuff. But what actually turned out to be great about this project was that it forced me to go through and figure out what every sen single one of these sensors d was doing. I mean, there's, there's example code, but like I actually, a lot of times you'll buy a kit like this and you'll wind up sticking everything in a box and you might pull out the PIR sensor, you might pull out the buzzer or whatever and um, but with this, because the sensor was in the box, I had to find a way to use it and I had to find a way to get valid readings from it. And I think that was actually a really, really good exercise for me. So I had three surprises doing this project. The first one was that the Key Studio code was actually plenty good enough to do what I needed to do in terms of learning how all the sensors worked. There's the, the sheet that shows you the sensors has a number on it the number corresponds with the project and so you know if i want to use this little uh, detector sensor i guess it's a motion sensor the pir i can come in here and take their code and basically understand how it works so the the code it was not elaborate but it was enough that basically i used their code on i think 35 out of the 37 sensors to at least get me in the right direction so that's that's good. That was surprising. The second thing was that the um, that the Mega was actually able to power everything on the board. Like that blew my mind that it wasn't rebooting and causing weird sensor values and all that kind of stuff. And the third thing has to do with the code itself. So I did not get very elegant. I included the libraries wherever possible. I used the ones that they gave me. And uh, I obviously had to change pin numbers. So my analog pins, my digital pins, had to make a little change over here for the IR sender. But uh, basically I went in order. And uh, so these are counting up, these are counting down. And, you know, inputs, outputs, just put it all in my, in my uh, setup thing. And then basically what I did was the beginning of the loop, anything that was high energy, I turned it off as the loop began. And then I took all of the sensors and I just turned their example sketches like this into little functions. So if I want to check the light level, I turned it into a very simple function and I would come down here and read the light level. And so all of those things 
super easy and all that. What absolutely blew my mind in a beyond the power, beyond the fact that it all worked, was this. When I got down, when I got done, the entire sketch, it's 535 lines with a whole bunch of libraries, used 5% of the program storage space and 17% of the dynamic memory. I, that, I don't know if that is more to say about Key Studio or the Mega itself, but the, the Mega is an amazing piece of engineering for seven bucks that you can hook all this various stuff up to it and touch 17% of the memory available to it. That just absolutely blows my mind and just, it's why that's my go-to board for all this kind of prototyping. So anyway, I hope you I hope you take this video for what it is. It was goofy, just trying to see if I could do it. And uh, it was a fun project. Turns out I learned a lot. Have a great day.